Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again, we're uh, focusing on eyes, or we're focusing on how to use or, or maybe to train the different parts of our body to serve Christ as our Lord. And our focus this week, as we've said already, is on our eyes. Jesus said in our gospel lesson, the eye is the lamp of the body. And a lamp or a light helps you. It's kind of easy for us to take that for granted these days because lights are so easy to come by. Of course, it was a lot more difficult in Jesus' day, and a lamp or a light and the oil you needed were uh, really important and allowed you to do all kinds of things, just as light still to this day helps us to accomplish work or, or do our chores or read a book or any number of things. Of course, I Today, Jesus is encouraging us not just to consider what we're seeing, but also how we're seeing. If the eye is the lamp of the body, it's not simply one more part of life. Um, And so Jesus encourages us, don't let what you see be purely accidental. Instead, he encourages us to be intentional about where we're looking. A lamp shows you what you need to see. As Jesus says, if your eye is healthy, then your whole body is full of light. But when your eye is bad, your body is full of darkness. Therefore, be careful, lest the light in you be darkness. Uh, It might be helpful to think of our eyes as almost... Uh, a filter. Now, there's some things, of course, we can't control. There's some things we can see and can't, or we can't control seeing that happen in front of us and can't walk through your life with your eyes closed, right? But in some ways, our eyes are kind of like a, a filter. You know, you pull a filter and it, and it stops some things and it lets other things in. And Jesus encourages us uh, to use our filters on our eyes and not just to, again, be but to be intentional about what we're looking at and how we're looking. Jesus says, be careful. Don't just take your vision for granted or or look at whatever you want. Rather, be purposeful. And the first step in being purposeful with any part of our body, including our eyes, is to first figure out where you're at uh, so that you can know where you want to go from where you're at. And it would be helpful to take, you know, think this past week, what have you seen? What, what kinds of things have you seen uh, in, in the past week? Maybe make a, a mental inventory. Or if you really wanted to get serious about it, you could journal one week uh, for some of the different things you've seen in that week gone into the, as they say, the window of your soul. And do you need to make any additions or deletions? Because what you see affects how you see everything else. That's not just me talking, that's science, right? Our body reacts to different stimuli. And, and when we see things that we like, our brains send chemicals that make us feel good to our bodies or, you know, and, and so we're wired to try to go for those things that made us feel good before. Similarly, when we see something our, we don't like, our brain chemistry um, makes us feel sad or, or bad. And so now our body, not just, you know, not just a choice, but our bodies themselves are being trained to avoid those kinds of things. So, you know, as the song says, careful little eyes what you see, because good or bad, it will start to rewire your brain, your circuitry. Maybe not using all the proper terms, but the concept is is scientific. The the good news is that our brains are, and our synapses and all that junk, that's not junk, but they are constantly rewiring themselves. So it's never too late to change, right? brains continue to rewire. And again, the point is we kind of train our bodies uh, by what we look at or what we 
experience in life, we start to train our, our whole self uh, to go in particular directions. So the point being is train your eyes to look at certain things. Um, eye discipline in football is a term that's thrown around. It means looking at your, the key things your opponent is doing. You know, because in a, in a play, uh, there might be all kinds of motions if you're on defense. There might be all kinds of things going on. But really, all you need to focus on is a couple things, and you don't want to get distracted by all the motion around you unless it's your particular you know, assignment. Um, but otherwise, you're supposed to have eye discipline and look uh, at what you need to be watching so that you don't get thrown off track. And the same sort of thing can apply to us as Christians. We need eye discipline. We don't get too distracted by everything that happens in life, but know what's most important and what are the key things to, to our life or to our life as a Christian and stay focused on those because our opponent Satan is looking to distract us, just like Joe sends somebody in motion to distract the linebacker so that he can go this way while the linebacker, you know, the same thing our opponent, uh, Satan, is looking to distract us from what's really important. He's trying to get us to take our eyes off the prize. So what are the key things uh, that we are supposed to be looking at? Well, I've thrown a couple in here. Um, uh, there's probably more, but here's a, a, a few different keys that we should be paying attention to. And one that I think is particularly pertinent uh, right now is how much time are you spending online? Uh, we can... We can't always these days go everywhere anymore, but we can look at a website or check out a YouTube video or join a Zoom meeting or any number of things, right? And right now, we thank God for the internet. Uh, we need it, but we also need to, as Jesus said, be intentional, uh, be careful how we're using it. And, and the truth is, some people are going to need to spend, everyone's different, people are going to need to spend varying amounts of time online, and I'm not going to sit up here and say you need 37 or 163 minutes or whatever. I, obviously, I can't make that decision or tell you what's too much or too little, unless you're my kids, and, and then I can. But uh, otherwise, um, everybody's going to have different, uh, different amounts of time going to need to spend online for work or for connecting with family or other things. The only point I want to make is there is such a thing as too much time online. Whatever that line is for you, uh, you're probably going to be more, have a better idea of where it is than I do for you. But the internet can be a time suck and uh, our phones can become uh, too much of a distraction at time. And so it's important as we're looking today, just a really, I think, relevant issue is how much time we're spending online. Uh, now, again, the internet is, I'm, I don't want to say that it's bad because it's not. In fact, we need it and it's really helpful for us in many ways. Um, but it's important to remember and keep in mind that TVs and computers and cell phones they are tools. They're not an end in and of themselves. And when they become an end in and of themselves and they distract us from more important things, well, that's when it's time to, to uh, rein in our use a little bit. And uh, probably like many of you, I have to admit that there's probably times that I've spent too much time online or I spent too much time uh, looking at my phone. And so I'm... Uh, preaching to myself as much to anyone else. But it, again, it's important to remember that while we need them and their tools, remember that they're just tools. But here's some more timeless issues uh, that, don't, uh, that don't rely on technology. Another question is, what should we be looking at? Last week, um, in our letter to the Philippians, uh, Paul reminded us to 
focus on what was good. If anything is good or praiseworthy, look at these things, Paul said. Um, what good things might we be looking at? Well, we know some of these answers are obviously, uh, we can look at God's word and it's important to make that a priority. Uh, right now is a wonderful time to look at the beauties of God's good creation. You know, driving through the hills in Cincinnati and seeing all the different colors. It's a, it's a, a beautiful time. And looking at simply observing the beauties of God's creation is a positive thing. Uh, or focusing on the tasks we need to carry out. That could mean jobs at, or tasks at work or things we're trying to accomplish at home. Another important thing for us to be looking at is those around us, looking at our, our family, maybe our spouse, or uh, friends, or, or co-workers. Uh, see what people are doing around us and uh, what they need or what they're communicating to us. It's so important in life, in communication, they teach you to be looking at the person that you're communicating with because you will miss so much if you're not paying attention to uh, what they're saying, not only with their words, but with their body language and their expressions. And that kind of leads into the next key uh, question is, who are you looking at? Who in front of you? Who do you see on a, a daily or weekly basis or maybe monthly? But if somebody regularly is in front of you, then they deserve your attention. Uh, spending time paying attention to your spouse or to your family or to your close friends or to fellow church workers uh, is uh, important. One super Christian thing to do is to focus on uh, or look at the people that no one else is paying attention to. People who are overlooked or ignored or despised. Well, that's really folks that Christ would have us not ignore, uh, but to look at and pay attention to. And some, you know, we friendly reminder, just because we have to be more physically distant these days doesn't mean that we need to become emotionally distant from our loved ones uh, or spiritually distant from our brothers and sisters in Christ. And now this is certainly, it's easy when you can't see somebody or you can't be in the same, you know, physical space as somebody. Here's where we need to be using our phones and the internet. It's easy to kind of lose track of that, but in kind of a, a reminder uh, to, not, to not forget about all those people who it's not impossible for you to connect with, but it's easier to forget about nowadays. Uh, I think it's, that's something that probably is, uh, is we're prone to doing. And, and remember, we can't maybe connect with everybody in the same exact way but there's still ways that we can connect, and we, we all appreciate that, and, and others appreciate that when we connect with them uh, and make a, a bit of an effort. Even if we can't see them in person, uh, simply touching base can communicate uh, that we care. Another question is, who are we looking, not just looking at, but who are we looking to? Because we all look for examples in life, for, for role models or leaders or call it whatever you want. We naturally see people who are successful and we want to uh, replicate their success. Our default mode is often to focus on our, our families um, as our role models and examples of how to live. But even with the best of families, we all still need to look for uh, others, look to others as well as for clues or advice on how we ought to live or speak or act. Um, we need positive Christian examples. Now, the scriptures provide some decent examples for us, of course, and one really great example in Jesus. But for many of us, it helps to have somebody who we can observe a little more closely uh, as well. Um, I was certainly blessed, as many of you maybe were too, to have uh, really helpful and, and good examples around me. My parents and my brother were, uh, my older brother were, were much more often than not good examples to me of how to live and to act, and I thank God for them. But we all need 
more. Uh, we all need a variety of people and models and examples of how we ought to live. Um, when I was a kid, of course, I, I liked sports stars and, uh, and uh, other people, including family, and even some at times my pastors were people who I was maybe not always thinking about looking to, but I was looking to them for cues or uh, uh, standards of how to live uh, my life. And so that rolls into our challenge for this week. And every week I've been trying to give you something, uh, something practical to do. And today is to try to focus on a Christian leader or role model. Uh, maybe it's, a, maybe it's a, a strong Christian in your field of work or, or, or in your family. Um, I'm, for instance, going to try to be intentional and think about, because sometimes I know I, I do things, um, and I think about how my dad, for instance, might handle different things because uh, he probably handles some things better than I do, and I would do better to, to pay attention to his example. So that, that's one thing I'm going to do. I, got a, I recently got a book by a, a Christian, uh, Lecrae, who's a, a Christian musician, uh, but who's also really creative and intelligent and faithful in his, uh, in his faith to Christ. And so I'm reading that book. Uh, your list of what that, who that is, uh, could be very, very different. But what's important is to have some God-fearing, faithful examples that we look to, and I encourage you uh, to, to do that this week. Um, and how you do that, again, might be different. I'm kind of a, uh, I'm, I like books, and so reading a book is a natural way. Reading a book might not be a way you do it. It might be uh, just paying attention to, to somebody or watching a, a video about them or an interview them and things. Uh, of course, above all, we look to Christ our Lord. We look to Jesus as the author and perfecter of our faith, as the author of Hebrews says, uh, because he's going to tell us, Jesus give, tells us many things. He gives us wonderful advice and instructions on how to live. He, he gives us advice on all kinds of things, including our eyes and how to use our eyes. He gives us advice about how to treat our neighbors, how to have what kinds, of, how to have compassion, and how we ought to live and speak and even think. But we don't just look to Christ for uh, as for instructions. We also can look to Him as an example, uh, because as we said, we need examples. We need visual examples of how to live and think and breathe and act in this world. And certainly none can surpass Christ our Lord, although really good examples will reflect on him. Uh, it's good not just to read about Jesus, but to really look, if I can use that expression, to pay attention not just to the words, but to what Jesus is actually doing in our gospel lessons uh, as he's having compassion or reaching out or, or touching someone uh, or, or any number of actions that our Lord is doing that we uh, can learn from. We can see how he interacts with others and we also can see how he keeps his eyes focused on God's plan of salvation, which for him meant a single-minded focus on the cross and the victory that he won for you and me at great cost to himself. But ultimately, we look to Christ for something even greater than only instructions or example. We look to our Lord and Savior for mercy and grace. We're expecting something when we look to our Lord. We're not only here to observe what Jesus does or to see an example we want something from him. We have been promised something from him. We expect something from him. We want proof of his love and forgiveness for us. And of course, he gives it to us. And that is what a cross is meant to remind us of, of God's great love for us. And that's why Christians, that's why we use crosses, not because the cross is a holy or good thing in and of itself. It was actually quite a nasty, ugly thing in its day, 
uh, but we remember God's great love for us and, and the salvation and he purchased for us on the cross and the forgiveness that he promises. So as we think about our eyes, it's important to, um, you know, we, in, in some ways we keep an eye on ourselves and be careful about what we're doing and, and what we're looking at and how we're looking. We also keep an eye on leaders around examples in front of us uh, who can give us, who we can see, look to for how to take that next step or how to, how to deal with a certain problem or adversity. And of course, we first and foremost keep our eyes fixed on our Lord and Savior. Uh, we look to Christ and to the cross because our sins are shadowed by God's grace. He is the light, and as we look to him, he fills us with light as well. In Jesus' name, amen.